I'm here with the simplest yet coolest feature in the world for Cave Engine. You can see this simple character here. This is part of our um, sample project. And finally, we do have inverse kinematics. So as you can see, I'm moving his, uh, his hand using another um, object. And the hand moves to try to reach this and of course this is very useful if you're making a game let's say that you want to have a character to pick up an item in the ground or on the table i've been playing the last of us recently and he does a lot of that uh, you can use inverse kinematics to do this so you can create a generic animation and use it but this is also good for for example the ground placement you can see my ground is rotated here a little bit and if i rotate the ground um the lag keeps connecting with the the ground can move it up and now of course this is the simple example of this uh inverse kinematics i will show you a better one in a second so of course it it is not compensating the height of the character so it goes weird uh but it's so cool to see this in action let me stop this oh by the way let me play it again um i was not i did not test this but let's see how it works if i change the animation because as you can see uh it is indeed running an animation oops now i've uh, i've resetted everything here you go uh but if i change the animation to something else um it will probably Oh, it's not going to do its thing because it reloads the animation component here um, when I added this from the editor. So it gets rid of the um, of the component. But let me go ahead by hand here outside the game mode and change this to the kick. This will be a very bad example because it goes up. And this is a basic example. Uh, so I don't have any code for doing um, the decision if the character is on ground or not but this is another example and you can see it is punching and this hand is actually now trapped here with the ik and of course the ground is uh doing its thing so let's go to a better example here as i said this is a simple one let me go back to the idle animation here we go and let's go here for the third person demo the third person demo is evolving as you can see now i have like a gigantic terrain uh this is not news for you uh what probably is new is the uh exposure and the eye adaptation and the hdr so very nice i'm controlling i'm just still fine tuning some settings here but let's go ahead and play the game and i do have oh i need to work on this by the way but if you look here, the character, it is now aligning with the terrain, which is very nice. And this is actually well implemented. I uh, This is a, uh, a bit more complicated sample if I go here um, in the third person. Oh, by the way, this is the code for the, the first example. And the IK for the hand is probably the simplest possible thing, example for you to understand how the inverse kinematics work. Because as you can see, I'm getting the armature here from the animator and then I'm getting the hand uh, using the bone name and with this hand bone I'm basically um, of course first I need to get the position that I want and it is the I do have this hand IK transform that I fetch here in the start method which is pretty much like the scene object I'm getting the transform of it not nothing new here um, so I'm getting this position and I'm feeding this position to this function called inverse kinematics. It takes a position, it takes the number of uh, the chain length, in other words, the, the number of bones um, before the hand that I want to influence. I can put this zero to influence all the possible bones, or one, or two, or whatever. Um, it also takes a blend, which is very nice, because if I put like 0.5, it will blend like halfway between the current pose and the IK, and you get the idea, zero is no blend at all, and one, which is the default, is all the possible blend. Then I have other var uh, variables here to adjust, fine-tune uh, your IK, but this is the most basic thing. And as you can see here, I'm untransforming this vector because IK needs to work in local space, so keep that in mind, armature needs to be in local space. Um, so I have this 
very simple example for you. This is why I've made this um, and it is in the demo project. It will be available. It's not yet uh, there because this is 1.2 and 1.2 is not released. And I also have like this apply foot IK, which is a function that I created that does a little bit more because I'm basically getting the, the bone position and then recasting the ground to see uh, where it is supposed to be at. So this is why I have this raycast here. And then if there is a haycast, I'm basically applying the inverse kinematics to make the feet uh, touch the ground. Basically this. Um, and, but this other example, the, trans uh, the third person, it's a bit more complicated. Um, it does have a bit more, so you can see this is the code. But it is not like... A, because the things that are complicated is just because like to make the inverse kinematic work the way you want you need to think about some stuff for example if i'm walking of course when i'm when the character raises his feet uh, i want this to go to disable the ik otherwise the, the the feet will always be connected to the ground so we need to acknowledge that and we need to have extra code to do this and this is of course game specific so the engine cannot um imagine when it is supposed to enable or disable you need to uh, specify this to the engine um, so i do have code for that and i also have code to align to, to displace the uh, the height of the character because when it is in a slope like that uh, it may not sound like but the character is actually below uh, where it, it is actually supposed to be otherwise the the this feet here i don't know if the the character's left feet, now it's correct, <laughs> um, we're not going to touch the ground. And I also have uh, a debug information for this. Let me see if I can enable this. If I debug, um, if I enable this, oh, I need to restart the game. One second. I'll get a player. I will enable the debug IK. I have this, of course, for teaching purposes. Uh, you can see there's a green uh, debug sphere here. And if I'm on a steep angle, you can see the like the feet, the, the left feet is way below this green um, debug information. And this green stuff is where actually, actually where the, the character physics, like the capsule ends, you know. So this is just, of course, a visual effect for you. Um, and I do have other stuff here, other indications. Anyways, so basically this is the inverse kinematics. It's very easy, very useful. And of course it makes a huge difference. As you can see here, the character is uh, adapting to the ground and so on. And because we have terrain system now, it is very useful and very important to have inverse kinematics in place exactly to do the foot placement. Okay, so this is pretty much like the main reason why I wanted to make the inverse kinematics for this specific version, uh, because since it will come with the terrain, it will look very odd to not have the foot placement uh, in place. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Anyways, uh, this is uh, another great example. This is a step and you can see the, the legs of the character. It is properly aligned very, very well, very nice. And also, like this character, the, the system, uh, this demo project is crazy because I don't know if you remember, but I also have from past videos uh, this option here that allows aiming. So if you want to make a game and you want to have like a character to have uh, GTA like behavior that aims up and down, of course, there's no weapon here, but you can, you, you get the idea. Um, it is very simple and it is here in the code. It aims up and down. Uh, the code for this. Is actually here in the pulse evaluate and it is again very simple i'm just seeing if the character is blending and also i am doing some weight check because uh, there's a blend um to to allow us move transition between the animations i, I have layered the animations here and layer features so there's a lot going on here um to teach you how to deal with animations in cave and i'm basically getting the spine bone uh, and making it look at the, the camera forward direction. So that's basically it. And of course, I'm compensating a little bit because the forward is not technically the forward of the spine here. Anyways, technical details, but um, it is very simple to make the, the character look at. This is not new, by the way, this is in Cave 1.1. So if you have a copy of the engine, you can already do this. And it is already in the uh, sample project, which is very nice. And you have like multiple animations here. And they all work with the IK, by the way. So if I... And here you can see the carrier is probably doing his thing. Let me go to a steep uh, corner like this. It will probably be uh, wanting to fall. 
and it is a bit hard to tell it is not actually you can see is working very nice very great anyways so this is the inverse kinematics uh, you can adjust and I'm very excited for this feature. Let me know what else you want when it comes to uh, animation to armature stuff. Cave Engine already have a lot of controls. As you can see, you have uh, mul multiple layers. It have blend. It does have filters for individual bones. So if one, uh, for example, here, I'm playing two different animations. The upper part of the character is playing an idle animation, uh, but the lower part, the legs are playing like a, a walk animation. And this is actually a better example for you to see the inverse kinematics in action. You can see, man, how cool is that? Very nice. Anyways, the fit is actually a little bit below the ground uh, in some points here, but this is pretty much me not adjusting this properly. Anyways, uh, you can uh, fix this in code or maybe I'll fix this. I'll probably fix this for the uh, final build here of this sample project, but it's still very nice to see everything working very well and look at this terrain man it is huge <laughs> i can be walking here forever so imagine this with a bunch of stuff um it will be great so cave 1.2 is gigantic uh i wanted to release this already but it's not ready yet because as you guys know i really 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 um put the effort that is necessary to make each release of the engine uh, battle tested. So now the next step for me and for Cave 1.2 is to actually um, use it use it here in the studio to make some games and to test the terrain system, to test the IK and every new feature that it gets. Uh, the, the rendering, by the way, the, the visuals they look better i don't know if you can spot because of course it's a simple test scene um, there's not much going on but i've improved a lot especially when it comes to physically based handling so yes uh, the feature looks bright for cave and for cave 1.2 so make sure you stay tuned and you get your copy of the engine if you haven't already because it's great anyways folks thanks for watching this video my name is Guilherme and i see you in the next video bye